So why should we care about plant diseases? Well, I think we should really care because plant diseases destroy not just plants, but they destroy civilizations and communities. There's an old Spanish proverb which says that civilization and anarchy are just seven meals apart. And plant diseases can be the reason for losing those important meals. I became interested in this when I was around about 16 years old. At the age of 15, I was kicked out of school in Dublin. And I went to live in the west of Ireland with my cousin who had a hostel. And this hostel is a remnant from the Irish potato famine of 1845. The Quakers went in to build this hospital to provide relief to the starving millions of individuals. And one of the things I noticed when I was in that part of Ireland, a place called Connemara, are the scars which are still on the landscape. These scars you can see, which are transecting fields, and they represent the last crop that was ever sown, and it wasn't harvested. What the Irish used to do was grow potatoes in something called lazy beds. They would heap the soil up and put in some seaweeds, terribly marginal lands, but it grew potatoes very well. And then the crop failed, and the cro crop failed because of a, a disease called Phytophthora infestans. It literally means infectious destroyer of plants. And it wiped out the crop, and 1.2 million people starved immediately, and over 2 million people emigrated, and this was one of the most important famines in the history of Western civilization. Fast forward 25 years, and I find myself working as a professor in a land-grant university like Penn State. And the land grants were set up in order to enable agricultural development using science. And this has been enormously successful for Western communities, such as the US, Canada, Australia, and Europe, where science has really helped us increase agricultural productivity but it's not helping the global community. There are still farmers in places like Sub-Saharan Africa, which grow in pretty much similar ways to where the Irish did 170 years ago. Small plots of lands, monocultures, highly threatened by diseases. Think about cassava, for example. It's feeding as much as 600 million people each day, and it's currently threatened by two diseases, two viruses. So what would happen if the diseases came and knocked out cassava growing throughout Sub-Saharan Africa? Well, that would be Ireland in 1845 magnified a thousand times. But currently, these farmers, they have computers in their pocket. They have smartphones. They have the ability to connect globally. They have computing power, which is a million times more than the Apollo space missions which sent man to the moon. So I had a simple idea. How about we could connect these farmers up and give them all the knowledge they needed in order to prevent diseases? So I reached out to my colleague here at Penn State, Marcel Salate, who's now at EPFL in Switzerland, and together we cooked up this idea called Plant Village. Very simple idea, remove the barriers to growing more food by giving every farmer in the world the knowledge that he or she requires to make an, an adequate and relevant decision. So we took all the information which was behind paywalls and we made it for free open on the internet to anybody with a connection. So we're trying to leverage the power of the smartphone, which is the ha in the hands of hundreds of millions of farmers around the world. We make all our knowledge available through a free app and a mobile-ready site. We have literally thousands of pages of free content, which wasn't available beforehand. And now 1.5 million people from around the world have come to use this source and resource. We're also using the camera technology, which is in the phone and the computing power. We're partnering with Google to use deep learning to come up with machine learning algorithms that can automatically classify the diseases that you see on your crops and allow you to make that decision and then link with that global network of support. And this is not just for smallholder farmers in Africa. This is for somebody growing some tomatoes on a balcony in Brooklyn or a community-supported agricultural farm in Baltimore or a smallholder farm in Burkina Faso. We're trying to help the whole community in one moment.